Hi, my name is Tony from the Clearview Hypnotherapy Centre. And in today's present climate of the situation with COVID-19, all around the world, we're dealing with a lot more anxiety, a lot more self-esteem and confidence. And the mental health and mental well-being is being chipped away at very, very slowly. I've had the wonderful pleasure to have a, a conversation with Tom. Tom's a local businessman, and he deals with charities that help people with homelessness and mental health and mental well-being problems. Hopefully you'll enjoy the interview and be able to get something from it. So, good afternoon, my name is Tony from the Clearview Hypnotherapy Centre and I'm very pleased to be joined by Thomas McMillan. Um, Thomas McMillan is a local businessman who's done some fantastic work, not only for himself, but also uh, for homeless charities um, over here and also in the, in the UK. Just to give you a brief history of, uh, of Tom, he's had his own hairdressing business uh, for 35 years. He now works in Calahondo with his lovely wife, Anita. They have so many awards, they have to get extra shelves now just to put them on. Um, but he's worked with um, uh, the Scottish... Scottish Awards, the Scottish National Business Awards, who've recognised his achievements, and also been working with um, uh, L'Oreal and he's won various, various trophies in several categories. And also the Duchess of York, am I correct in, in saying that? And a couple of Barcelona players yeah. just before they went on to the Champions League final. When, when was that, Tom, the Champions League final? I, I did a few actually. There was uh, a couple of players I did leading up to. They were playing Arsenal, and uh, which they won, uh, which will upset Arsenal fans. But it's a few years back. But I went and did two of the players here for the final, and then they, they came back to win two one. Uh, Arsenal played really well actually. Went one nil up with ten men, and then Barcelona overcame them. And a, a good friend of mine, who was one of the players that I, I had uh, cut his hair, set up both Barcelona's goals, Fair and he's now actually just made. The assistant manager at Barcelona, a boy called Henry Larson. So Wonderful. he's a really, really good lad and, and uh, cut his hair for years. When he, they both, him and another lad, Giovanni Van Bronckhurst, when they were in Scotland, and then continued to do so when I went out to see them at Barcelona. So it was great. Fantastic. And Sarah Ferguson was actually, she was a, she had a really, really nice woman, actually. You know, obviously it's difficult with these things with the press, if it can be, and, and yeah. quite misleading in how people's own personality is. But, she was the patron of a, the Teenage Cancer Trust. And one of my clients set that up in Scotland and she came to attend a ball there. And I did it here for the ball. So, and she was great, really lovely. Wonderful, wonderful. And also I have the privilege of having my hair coiffured by yourself on a, on a regular basis over the last couple of years, which is- Privilege which is all I'm, in, I'm, in good, I'm in good company. But the main reason for the chat today is you're involved in um, in your homeless projects, and um, I believe you've got something yeah. being set up now that will come out in the UK at the end of the year. Yeah, we've been working really hard, probably, well, really specifically for the last six months, and uh, along with a team of people and my own daughter, Kyla, uh, and a project that I'd come up with coinciding with the fact that I write motivational books and I write motivational uh, quotes every day on Instagram on a page called Thomas McMillan Quotes. And basically the the, the sort of course of last year, I went home, my mum had been out and I went home to see her. And whilst out walking my sisters in the evening while my mum would be taking a bit of rest, I realised just how desperate the homeless situation in the UK had become, uh, you know, even more so in the last six years while I've been here and not been ever present in the UK. And it was really quite upsetting, actually. And I think as well, because I saw so many young people who, you know, when I was their age, I felt my life had barely begun. And here was these people already in a sort of position that, you know, sort of quite destitute and, and uh, sleeping rough in the rain. And so I designed initially some hats with motivational quotes on them. And the, the basis is that, you know, when the hats would be sold, we would take the proceeds and to help fund maybe sleeping bags or uh, blankets or different types of, you know, much needed materials to help homeless people. In the last six months, that's grown arms and legs, literally. And so the gift for the one a better way of, of putting it has sort of not changed, but there's been things that have grown onto it, you know, that 
having spoken specifically to, to homeless people and people involved in helping homelessness, uh, you realise that things like flasks, gloves, hats, there's additional things that I hadn't necessarily considered, having been fortunate enough to never be homeless myself. Right. Uh, do you realise actually it's not what you think people need, it's what they need, you know, and you'll experience that obviously with the hypnosis, Tony, you know that yeah. people's needs can differ from what you perceive them to be. And in this case, the only thing that matters is helping where we can with people who are very much in need of that support. So I'm wow. delighted to be working on that project and hopefully by around Christmas, we should be launching as well as hats hoodies, t-shirts, and the support of some guys who the, the, will, will come out, but a really massive national brand in the UK, yeah. and they're, uh, they're supporting us, and they're going to manufacture the, the garments actually for us, so the quality will be exceptional, and then when we sell these these items, then we'll be able to fund, uh, you know, the, the garments that are needed for, to sell to homeless people, and then projects, we're looking at charities that like mine, for instance, who we're, we're trying to get the help and support of some of these charities that are much more equipped to deal with the, some of the mental health issues that leads to homelessness. But in any case, be it alcoholism, drugs, whatever it is, it's called, sometimes it's domestic violence, whatever it may be, we want to try and help prevent more homelessness as well as support those who are currently finding themselves unfortunate enough to be homeless. When I was obviously speaking to you when, uh, when I visit your, your salon, um, the, the passion that you have for it anyway is you, you can feel it, you can see it, and to be able to help somebody um, in, you know, long term as well. It's not just the, Thank you. Here's, here's a fiver, um, go get yourself a bag of chips or whatever it is. It's actually then looking long term to actually make sure they have a continuing um, progress as such. I mean, before you actually... Um, stepped in did, did you actually speak to any of them or did you did you get their stories or is it just a general thing that you want to be doing i well i did i mean while i was there in the uk i stopped and spoke to to some of the people you know we're of an era tony you and i where when you had somebody who was homeless or sort of living in the streets or rough sleep whatever way you would term it there was a perception of being kind of downing out, you know, somebody who yeah. was older, maybe a drunk, or it was like the local village tramp kind of thing, you know. And I think that perception has sort of, uh, it's kind of set itself in stone. I think for young people now, drugs probably is, is even a bigger perception in, in, the, in the sort of root cause of this. But in actual fact, when you speak to people, quite often that they're, they're very normal, uh, reasons of how somebody has ended up homeless, losing a job, maybe one of the guys had lost their sibling, didn't deal with it very well, working in a city in London, went from, you know, having a flat in the city and having means to a car or to any a credit card or whatever kind of facilities they would require to, to just live the way any of us live, to find themselves homeless in the same 12-month period. Yeah. And I think when you delve into it, especially now because of uh, the impact of COVID and how dramatic that's going to be in so many people's lives, you realise actually that within a sort of six month period, there's so many people who are living day to day the way we are and just working away and keeping your head above water and keeping your bills paid and keeping a roof over your head and maybe over your family's head. And going from that, that within a 12 month period, you know, a six to 12 month period can find themselves uh, in a pretty desperate position because there's people that I know here and people that we both know that maybe get bars of restaurants who have had a really good income here for the last few years and overnight they've got no income. Yeah. You know, and unless you've got a really strong basis of savings, then that's going to have an impact in your day to day living. And that was one of the things that frightened me more is that when I spoke, the more people that I've spoken to, the root causes behind homelessness are actually much closer to us than we think. Definitely. And my daughter being involved in it and involving friends of hers who are teenagers, they're realizing that poor choices as teenagers can lead to, to a very desperate situation quite early in their lives. And so all the ambitions that we grow up with as teenagers can be robbed from us. Uh, you know, just with two or three bad choices in life or two or three bad choices that have been sort of 
you know, that, that have been put upon us, that things that can happen in your personal life, a parent dying, a parent splitting up, or a parent remarrying, and you don't fit into the jigsaw anymore, and all of a sudden, you're in a bus shelter, you know, and it's, yeah. it's quite, it's, it's terrifying how close it is to each of us. And also as well, today, the, the mental awareness is, is on such a, everyone's sort of high priority list. Everyone is getting recognised now. It's not just, oh, buck yourself up, you know, pull your socks up and all this kind of stuff. Now it's becoming more recognised. And to deal with mainly people's anxieties as well, to try and prevent them going down a certain road uh, and try and create yeah. a better state of, of mental wellness, for, for want of a better phrase. Um, so what I'd like to do, in, or myself from the Clearview Hypnotherapy Centre, if you know personally of anyone that you're helping on your with your charity who would like some help after you've helped them on a, on a mental basis through through hypnotherapy i'm very happy to do that absolutely free of charge to try and work with them to try to try and bolster what the work you're doing which i think is absolutely fantastic um so if there's anyone you know we can do it by zoom um obviously if, if they're in the uk wherever they are in the world um i can make sure that i'll be on hand you just give me a call and say tony got this chap you really could do with some some help in a different way uh, i'd be very happy yeah. to to help you with that and try and bolster them and give them give them the self-esteem back and the confidence back because once you're i think once yeah. you're on that spiral your self-esteem gets you've been through all the knocks like you say you know it's not just the the, the things that we think about as people been drinking too much. It's just the everyday stuff that grinds people down and your self-esteem and your yeah. confidence gets battered and battered and battered. Um, and like I said, I'd be very help, uh, glad to help anybody uh, who you want me to uh, absolutely free of charge to work, with your, to work with your charity. Uh, bro, thanks, Sue. Two, two six. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Sorry. And then another, parking fine. I'm still at work. Another, another parking fine. Another parking fine. No rest. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. No, no, it's, it's a delivery of <laughs> um, No, that's, that's incredibly kind. And I think, you know, it's quite amazing, actually. Obviously, you and I have been talking a lot about hypnosis and your whole journey through that. But I think the side of it and, and the sort of uh, our perception of what causes people to, to suffer mental health issues yeah you know i think you're right getting on to the path of actually discovering what the real reason and the basis behind it is because so often we make a preconceived sort of decision or thought on what's causing people to to have these mental health issues but if you're doing it from a stable position it's really difficult to understand you know the thought process that leads someone to some of the choices they make and I've spoken openly to you. My dad was a recovered alcoholic, and uh, and I can say he recovered because he died sober. He would never have said that whilst he was alive because mm -hmm. he worked the A program every day to, to ensure that he stayed sober. And thankfully, he was 42 years sober when he died. So we were really grateful for that and the changes it made to our lives as a result. And even personally, uh, I shared with you that over the course of the last 13 months, I decided to stop drinking myself. Yeah. But the thing is that Sometimes when people are in a position of pain, they can't get to the root cause of it. And so they can drink or take drugs or prescription drugs or other aspects that are available to them that hide uh, the, the pain or dull the pain. And, and so I think what you're able to do is actually, in a safe environment, allows people to confront maybe issues that have got to be addressed. Yeah. Um, and I'm in part of different uh, alcoholic groups like online and on Facebook and stuff. And so often I see that that message there that people are actually, you know, my dad used to say there's no solace in the bottom of a bottle. But for a lot of people, when they're in that desperate sort of stage and, and can't find a way out, sometimes just dulling the pain or numbing the pain yeah. uh, is weird through a bottle or through pills or whatever type of, you know, drug that, that, that uh, they, they may sort of get involved with. Whereas... I think what you're doing encourages people to, to actually face up and maybe address things that in many cases have not been the fault, they've been put upon mm. in, in some of these circumstances, but still the best way to actually uh, find a recovery programme is to deal with the problem at its root cause, you know, so I think it's incredible what you're doing. Yeah, and I think a lot of the time as well when I'm dealing with, with my clients now, they don't even know what the, what the cause is. 
um, and they'll present me with an issue. Oh, Tony, it's this, it's this. Um, and nine times out of 10, it's not. It's, it's very often the issue that they present me with is never the issue. And it could be something that's, yeah. that they've stored in their subconscious for ages that they, they just can't remember or can't pick up and it's causing, it's like a learned response. And the subconscious is, is hanging on to that, whereas the conscious can't actually see and feel what's going on. And so they, like you say, they, they take to a drink uh, or whatever substance they use, or, or they just get just a state of mental depression um, and they can't find a way out. With anyone I work with, they don't have to tell me what's wrong because the subconscious itself knows what's wrong. And all I do is put them into a state of hypnosis, let the subconscious sort it out. And that's why I say, if we can get somebody, because some, an experience on the streets for somebody, they, that might leave them very wary of, of, of people wanting to help and you know, are they wanting to find out about my child and this and that. And nine times out of 10 people are not prepared to, to talk to somebody about things. So if we just put them into hypnosis, let the subconscious do its work and let the issue be resolved by the person themselves or by the subconscious themselves. So nobody has to tell me their life story or their childhood is completely different. So it's, it's a blank canvas of people. And I just love to be able to, as I've known you over the years, um, your passion, I just love to put a little bit back uh, from what I've been taught and what I've learned to what I know, just put a little bit back. To, and if we can just help one or two people, I'd be absolutely overjoyed uh, if we can do that. It's really kind of you. It's, yeah. it's incredible. And I think this is the, the certainly the future part of what we're trying to do we're trying to prevent the next you know it could take 20 years tony you know there's 288,000 homeless people in the uk at the minute and obviously that's one aspect that has to be addressed but the other side of it is the prevention and the prevention is a big part of what we're looking at that you know how do you stop that 288,000 becoming 388,000 and so again, getting back to the, like, that's such a kind offer. And also, it's trying to get people before they reach that stage. And, and you know, somebody as skilled as yourself is able to maybe help somebody address a situation. And it's, yep. you know, I always feel that a lot of these issues, if it's possible to sort of take away the matches rather than trying to put out the fire, you know. And yep. that's, that's a lot of the way that we're looking at where we want to apply uh, the sort of opportunity of help that we can fund and, and sort of long-term provide is to ensure that maybe, you know, kids that like my daughter's age who's just done 17, you know, one of the things I'm really proud of that with her involvement is that she's involving other teenagers. And so they're discussing quite openly homelessness and how it can come about. And so consequently, she's got an understanding of actually, you know, it's, it's, it's not that far away in life. You know, I think when you look at like, Caroline Flack, sadly, at the beginning of the year, we lost. And people's immediate sort of response is, how can somebody who appears to be so happy has a great, you know, position in life, financially secure, and so all the things that most of us sort of deal with on a day-to-day -day basis to make their own lives easier, we then have a preconceived judgment that, you know, if these things are actually safe in another person's life, well, how could they not deal with the, the, the other aspects? But each of us are different, and, and each type of problem that we face personally, we face differently. And I think if we can get support such as your, your own and wider ranges of, of help, I think that's what will really benefit people who are having mental health issues and who could fall off the radar by just finding what the area of help that that individual needs rather than the, the aspect of help that we think they need. There's just somebody coming in, I'll be two seconds. No rush, no rush. <laughs> Right, I realise you're busy, so we'll, we'll wrap it there. So if somebody wants to find out about you and what you're doing, uh, especially your book you're selling as well, where can they find out about, about your book and, and, and the work that you're doing for the, uh, for the charity? Well, that's the just launch now, actually. The, the, the website, as it happens, has been built. Right. But what's happened is, similar to this, Tony, each time we get to the stage where we're ready to launch, somebody else adds something. And there's a delay because, all, you know, and one of the guys, Scott, who we're speaking to on Wednesday, has done just that. He's really involved in homelessness in Manchester. He's actually gone and, and slept on the streets himself uh, because he's really at the root cause of it, really wants to help people. He's had 
you know, MPs helping him. And uh, one of the, in fact, I, I heard the guy speaking today, one of the Manchester MPs um, who, I'm just trying to think the guy's name, and I heard him on the radio today because he's he's uh, been talking about, you know, this 10 o'clock curfew in the UK and how people have ended up binge drinking because they're trying to finish before 10 yeah. and the impact to them. Uh, but what people don't realise about the guy, he's saying that, and you could almost sense people saying, oh, well, that's a typical MP thing to, to say. Yeah. But I know for a fact this guy actually donates a big percentage of his salary directly to homelessness. Right. So I can see that he is genuinely concerned about it because that's what his actions do, not just what his words do. So, But th th these are other people that have been getting involved. So the minute that I get a website that we can work from, then I'll make sure that I send it to you. And we'll okay. be promoting it anyway, you know, this... We want to draw as much attention to, to the needs as possible. But as soon as we've got an actual address, uh, I'll be able to send okay, it to you. We'll get that put up. Listen, Tom, thanks ever so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I think what you're doing has been fantastic Pleasure. over the time. Um, I've had my hair cut, but my football, even though it's just like a Barcelona player, my football is terrible. So I'm going to have to speak to you about that. Uh, how to improve my, my football <laughs> with a haircut. Listen, fantastic. Uh, my best to you all. Uh, you take care of yourself. Thank you. And uh, we'll be in touch in any time you need my services, say for your charity. Be absolutely. That's uh, really kind, honestly. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Tim. And I'll be sure we've got, we do a Zoom meeting every Wednesday with the guys. So when we do it, I'll be sure to let them know. And I'm really appreciative. It's brilliant. Fantastic. Listen, Tom, I'll leave you to it. Re Realise you're busy. Have a fantastic day. And I'll catch up with you very take soon. Take care. All the best, you mate. Cheers. All the best. Bye. Cheers, Tony. So that was Tom. And I'm sure you'll agree he's doing an absolutely wonderful job. So working together, what we can do is we can offer help and assistance. And using hypnotherapy and hypnosis, we can help people who are suffering right now from anxiety, depression, self-esteem, lack of confidence. Get in touch with me. Give me a call. Let's nip this in the bud before it takes you over the edge. My name's Tony from the Clearview Hypnotherapy Centre. Have the very best day you can. And if you can't, give me a call.